Hi, I'm James Pack. I work at Anthro International in Gretna, Virginia. I would like to demonstrate a uh, porta potty truck here today. We're going to start in the cab. Has a power takeoff switch. You got your AMT water pump switch. And you also have your work light switch. Okay. You'll select whatever you want to do. If you want to cut your PTO on to, to run your vacuum pump, you'll come here, you'll select vacuum. You'll pull 20 inches to on load or you'll select pressure to offload. Okay. Porta potty is a little more complicated. We have a ground fill where you don't have to climb up on your tank and you just simply hook a water hose into it, open it and fill the vessel. Okay. We also have a bucket fill. You just pop the cap off, open the handle, fill your bucket, wash down your toilet, hang your bucket back on your truck. You have a high-end AMT water pump. The AMT pump is piped up to the hose reel, which is a hand reel, as a high-end hose reel. Uh, you use it to wash down your, your, your toilets, your, your johns. And also we have a four inch discharge that's piped to the side for easy access. When you get to your dump station, you just simply hook to it and open your discharge. If you come on around, we have an Amthor toilet carrier on the back that you can haul two porta johns on. We have a boat winch that you can go around one toilet or two to keep them from slack. As uh, far as maintenance on the port, uh, Porta potty trucks, you would grease your, grease your uh, PTO drive shaft once a month. You grease your man waves about once a month. You drain your muffler and your scrubber daily and your secondary. Uh, winter time, guys, make sure you run uh, RV antifreeze or keep your pump system drained down. Hi, I'm James Pack. I work for Antho International, it's Gretna, Virginia. Uh, I would like to demonstrate how to do PM maintenance, preventative maintenance, and pump a vacuum truck today. We're going to start with it's 4,000 gallon single compartment NVE866 vacuum pump. Uh, first thing we're going to do is go over how to, how to cut the unit on. You'll open the cab and simply pull the PTO switch. Okay, that's going to cut your vacuum on. All right, then you'll come here. You'll, you'll select vacuum, you'll pull 20 inches of vacuum, and then continue on, on loading the vessel. All right, then you'll go back to neutral, and then when you go to the offload station, you'll go and reactivate everything, put it in pressure. You'll pump 10 pounds of pressure to offload. Speaking of offload and onload, this is your onload, it's four inch. You'll hook your, hook your line here, open the vessel, and continue onload. When you get to the dump station, this is your discharge. You'll hook up to your, your waste station and discharge your unit. Preventative maintenance. All of our units has grease fittings in all your man waste. Okay, you'll grease them once a month. Uh, also, the power takeoff shaft, you'll grease once a month. Check tie downs once a month. Check the unit for any leaks on valving, man waste. Preventative maintenance monthly on the units will prolong the life of your tank, uh, keep DOT code up. This is Ann Thor's Matador vacuum tank. They're available in the material of your choice, steel, stainless steel, or aluminum, in ASME, DOT code, and non-code. We offer stationary or dumping tanks with or without a full rear opening door. We offer tank and component heating options the tank interior protection, epoxy lining, and magnesium anodes. We offer multiple compartments, heavy duty off-road constructors available, with several different makes and models, and pumps available. We also have numerous chassis models and makes. This is Anthor's Porta Potty Tank. It's available with single or dual side service with single or dual side workstations. We offer numerous pump options and sizes with tank interior protection such as epoxy lining and magnesium anodes. We offer multiple compartments and compartment sizes with multiple water pump and better options available. We offer several hose reels and water hose options with multiple tank mounted or underbody toolbox options also. We offer stationary and fold up rear gate options with numerous chassis makes and models available. Have you ever wondered how Amthor International builds the industry's top tanker trucks? 
At Amthor International, we pride ourselves on manufacturing quality American-made products. With over 100 employees, Amthor International gathers the best team to customize and craft your next tanker truck. From our engineering and design teams to our welders, mechanics, and electricians, our experts are focused on building the best tanker truck your business needs to get the job done. Our dedicated employees work around the clock pulling parts, bending aluminum, and fabricating steel to ensure your tank is made to the highest standards. Whether it's speaking with Butch to finalize your job card, Vicky designing your tank, Sheldon delivering your designs to the floor, Ronnie and Devon working in fabrication, Ethan operating the Pangiris to ensure your tank has the tightest weld, or Jack and Robert mounting your tank. Your custom-designed top-of-the-line tanker truck is manufactured by American hands to your specifications. At Amthor International, we're more than American-made. We are reliable solutions that keep you on the road. My name is Butch Amthor, president of Amthor International, Amthor Welding in New York. And uh, we manufacture truck tanks uh, for vehicles, plus many other items. I've uh, been in the business 54 years. Uh, started out when I came to Virginia with nothing and built it to the largest uh, tank truck manufacturer in North America today. It started in 1928. My grandfather was a blacksmith who used to shoe horses, made his own horseshoes, his own nails. I used to, as a little kid, used to wear the blower for him. Uh, Dad uh, opened up a welding shop and we used to make farm machinery. Where we're from in New York used to be a very large farm industry. I wasn't satisfied with that. and. Uh, Took on a tank line and started installing them, liked it, and started building tanks. When I came down to Virginia from New York, I didn't even have one order for a tank. Everything I had was up for collateralized with the bank. And I used to sleep in the office, eat ham and cheese sandwiches, work seven days a week, 15, 18, 19 hours a day. We're the largest within our industry for what we do. Some look at us as we're this big corporation and we're these, you know, uh, folks you can never get a hold of, um, and it's not like that here. Uh, we may be considered a big corporation, um, but you can always talk to an Amthor. You can always talk to Butch, my father, myself, um, which is uh, you know, a very important factor that we want to continue to to hold those values. You know, where we came from, where we are today, uh, we still hold those core values, and we feel it's a very important foundation for our company. The name of the tank company is not Midwest Tank or Southern Tank, it's Amthor Tank. And Amthor takes pride in what we do. And my one son, David, who does the engineering for the company, uh, him and I work close to side by side, and we make it fun. And we, we want to make the best product, and we do make the best product there. Nobody even comes close to our product today. Couldn't do it without my wife, Alice, who is my, also my business partner. She's a wonderful, wonderful lady. I've uh, been married over 50 years. She's an extremely smart businesswoman, and I respect her, and she respects me, which is most important. We have a great foundation of people here, have been here. In fact, we saw our very first employee that started here, we opened the doors. From there, we built, you know, we built on that family, and we feel our employees are like our family as our customers. I see Amthor International growing. Um, we have grown Every year since we've been in business, we're looking into expanding into new product lines um, and to kind of diversifying our product line even more. We're also looking at, you know, off-site locations to increase our distribution. We're a very aggressive company. Uh, we are constantly thinking of new ways to grow and expand. I don't see really anything uh, stopping us from getting to that point. I never envisioned Amthor as being what it is today from what I started with. Most tank companies are in it for the sale. I'm in it for the sale, but I'm also in it to serve the customer in, in, for a long period of time. I had a man come in yesterday and he said to me here, he says, you Mr. Hamthor, you know, my dad and I bought a tank from you in 1992. We're still using it today. It's the best tank we've ever owned. My hat almost fell off my head. <laughs> 
The best form of flattery is when you sell a man a tank truck and he comes back in two or three years or four years and buys another one and comes back again and buys another one. That's a form of flattery that you just can't uh, uh, put in with dollars and cents. My competition buys parts and, and bumpers and fenders and stuff off of me, which, which is a form of flattery. You've got to be there for the customer. Our customers are worldwide. We got customers in the Caribbean, we got customers in China, Taiwan, uh, Venezuela. We have got the reputation that they don't have to talk to 10 secretaries and 10 general managers. They can always talk to an Amthor. Doesn't make what time of day or night, we're always accessible. This is a cliche statement, but when somebody uh, buys our product, they're essentially buying our name. It's a kind of a corny thing, but it actually means a lot because the tank is an Amthor tank. You know, our name goes on it, so we take a lot of pride. So when people want to buy a product, I want them to say, I want to buy an Amthor. We will go above and beyond on even probably more than anybody else in the industry to make sure uh, that they're taken care of and uh, because we want to come back, we want to be happy. I'm Mark Agee, General Manager of Amthor International, Gretna, Virginia, tank manufacturer. We're going through the process of tank manufacturing. Um, you as a customer have been through the engineering process. Your prints have been signed off on. The next step is the prints hit the floor. The fabrication department is the next stop. This is where your material is requisitioned, be it stainless steel, steel, or aluminum. The fabrication department will take your prints, the shear the material to size, bend it if necessary, roll it into the shape of the tank. And the basic shape of the tank are four parts. You have a floor, two sides, and a top. We can go down and look at that particular equipment. This piece of equipment right here is a press brake. They've already sheared the material of steel in this particular instance to size. They're putting bends in it, forming it for print to install on your tank. This piece of equipment is a three-point roller. Uh, take up the quarter inch material and roll it into shape. From that point, it'll go to the fixtures to be assembled into a tank. As the fabrication department are making sides, floors, and top sheets for the tank, another integral part of the tank are the heads and baffles. And these are dividers inside of a tank, separating it into multiple compartments or one single compartment. That particular piece is made out of a sheet of aluminum. It's picked up with a crane, dropped into this machine right here. The hydraulic press comes on, develops up to 30,000 pounds per square inch. At that point, it automatically flows 120 pounds of air pressure against that sheet and it forms a concave surface. He'll take his piece of aluminum, mount it into the cup right here, and make a rotation with his hydraulic ram set into it. It acts like a pair of scissors and cuts it down to an inch and a half larger than this template. From that point, he has a finished cut. He'll take it out of this end of the machine, insert it in between these two rollers, and he'll end up with a one-inch flange, the exact size of this template. This is what's commonly called a head or a baffle in a tank. From this point, we have the floor, sides, top sheet, baffles, and heads to start a tank. The seals are set on a fixture. The floor is set, squared baffles and heads are put into place. This is before the tank has the sides on it, so you can actually see the internal workings of the tank. This machine is a pan gyrus. It's a semi-automatic robotic welder. Uh, it has a weld head at the top. This machine can track the length of the tank without stopping. It has less chance of a leak than a man welding by hand. This tank rotates 360 degrees. They turn it upside down, go inside of it, and weld the top out. Once it's welded out 100%, it goes to the finishing department. The basic tank out of the pan gyres, sides are on, welded out 100%, the floor is on, the heads and baffles, top sheet, and manways allowing access into the tank. Once it reaches finishing, the entire tank is buttoned up, closed up all the openings on it, and it's worked to give it its maximum pressure, which is an oil tank, five and a half pounds, is pressure tested. Also in this department, it'll be wired up to DOT specifications. Once that's complete, it goes to the cleaning process, and from there, either shipped to the customer or taken to our mounting department where it's mounted on a chassis, piped up, ready to service the customer. From the finishing department, our tanks are taken to the cleaning area. 
where they go through a mild acid bath, sanding if they have any scratches or blemishes and brought back with buffing compound to the original luster. From that point, they're taken to the mounting department for us to mount to the customer or ship to the customers for them to mount themselves. The next step after the tank is built and we're going to mount it here at Amto International is to bring the chassis in and prep the chassis. The chassis is prepped with a pump, pump the fuel to the metering system, bumpers are installed, the top of the truck frame is piped. From that point, the tank is brought in and it's piped also. Once that's done, both pieces are mated together and this is the end result. You have a working unit with a metering system, hose reel to deliver fuel to the customer, toolboxes, all the accoutrements that the customer requires. And from this point, it's a working unit. It's ready to go to the paint shop to be touched up and delivered to the customer. Here at Amthor International, we're a very diverse manufacturer. We're in multiple different markets. So each market has uh, a different set of customers. So to be able to target all those different customers and those different products, we have to be real a custom shop and really um, you know, build a product to their needs. So whether you're buying one truck or you're buying 100, um, we look at that customer as the same. We serve markets such as the refined fuel market, the propane market, the um, vacuum septic uh, truck market, the portable restroom market, fire apparatus market, a dust control water delivery market. We also build flatbed bodies, rack bodies, dump trucks, and uh, aviation refuelers. There are many other products down the road that we're, we're actually looking into now, so we're looking forward to expanding our product line in the coming years. We build a lot of special stuff that nobody else even wants to build. Uh, build tunnel flushers and stuff that so everybody gets laughed at. I want this thing made and everybody laughs at them. And I don't laugh at them, I, I just make them because that's what's made us number one. When a customer comes to us to buy a product, we want them to feel they can go nowhere else. We try to develop programs and incentives such as a one-stop shop. So they can come here, they can get the unit finance, they can get their truck, and they can get their tank in all in one shot versus have to go to a bank, a tank company, and a chassis you know, dealer to get all those components. They can come right to Amthor and buy them all in one shot. Have our own finance company. We do all the, you know, we do financing for our end users. We have our own leasing company for a full service leasing program. We go out and we purchase um, hundreds of chassis from different chassis manufacturers and we keep in our yard here so if somebody wants something, a small truck or a big truck depending on what the application is they literally can go in our yard and pinpoint one and say I want that one. We uh, keep turnkey units on the ground at all times it's ready to go. We also keep several tank vessels built on the ground so they can uh, grab you know what they want, we can customize it from there. If a guy doesn't want a red truck, we wants a white one, or he wants, you know, this tank or that tank, we want to have them all, all here to take care of that right away. We try to meet the demands of the customer, the immediate needs, uh, on, on several different levels. There's a lot of great companies out there within our industry, but I do feel that our product is superior. Uh, just because of uh, the thought process that goes into it, the engineering, um, how we over-engineer our products, how we really consider what the customer thought process is and to build it for them and not try to give them something they think that we think they need, but really design the entire product around them. When you build a product that makes their job easier, they're going to be happier, and they're definitely going to come back and want to buy more. I'm on the floor myself all day, every day, looking at this, you know, this is being done, that's being done. It's almost like a good restaurant when they got a, a top chef that goes through and he's checking all of the other cooks to make sure that the food is perfect. Well, I try to watch every aspect, and I'm on the floor trying to catch all the little stuff that makes our tank better than somebody else's. My supervisor, Mark Agee, and I have worked together coming up with all kinds of little wing bang things that makes our machines work better at a lower cost. Here at Amtors, we have all kinds of machinery. Um, we have four automatic welders, which we actually built ourselves. Actually, they work better than the ones that we bought. Uh, we currently just bought a new 350-ton press brake and a new 16-foot shear. And the reason we did that is because the old ones were we weren't getting the tolerances out of the uh, equipment that we needed. 
few years ago, the New York State Thruway called me and they said they had put a special tank. They wanted the tank to do a special item and everybody laughed at them. Nobody would build it. And then somebody up there that knew me said, we'll call Butch. So they called me and we built it. It's worked out so well, they've already bought 20 of them. City of New York, the same thing. We, uh, we just finished 50 units for them it's, uh, because they like our product and our product is the only one that holds up in the rigorous streets of New York City. Same thing in the Caribbean. It's very rigorous mountains and stuff and tanks don't hold together, but our tanks hold together. And listen to customers and listen to their problems so we know how to fix their problems so we can make a better product. To be able to meet the increased demand for our products worldwide, we started our own off-site training center. We would put folks through this training center, and the training center was designed specifically after our production process. So these folks that was um, being put through the school, they would put, be put in different sectors depending on where they would work in our facility. They would go through the school after being uh, hand-picked, hand um, passing several levels of exams prior to attending the course. The course could be anywhere from four to eight weeks and upon completion, they're guaranteed a job here at the company. By having this off-site training, it's allowed us to, have to limit the on-the-job training that we have here on site. So when they come off out of the school, um, they're ready to go to work, which has saved us a lot of time and be able to at least increase production uh, by 40%. We do a lot of ongoing training. I'm gonna say it's more of a cross training. Um, so uh, we can move folks around throughout the, the, the plant when needed. If we're short in one area, let's say we're, we're down folks in, in a certain part of the plant, we can kind of move them around. So it allows us to fill positions where, when needed.